Okay. Can I just go on the record and say that was the greatest Hunter Hunter episode we've seen thus far? Yeah, that, that was... Yeah, is just... there any contest? Which one comes close? None come to mind. That I, was I think incredible. there are a couple that are kind of... Like, kind of close. That... But not, not that close. That was amazing. Okay, so I wanted to bring this up because I mm-hmm. said I would mention it in the discussion. Yeah. I think the reason why Killua specifically killed someone that he knew that he could kill that wasn't his brother was because he didn't believe his brother saying that he wouldn't kill Gong. When he did that, he's basically saying, I don't want to give you any reason to doubt that I am a killer. I will not seek relations or friendship with Gon. I'm going oh, to disappear oh, okay. and yeah. be done with this. Yeah, all right. And by and by okay. And by doing that, he takes by making his brother think that he had destroyed him and defeated him mentally, he took away any desire he might have had to kill Gon at any point in the future. Right. He in a way was protecting Gon. Yes. Uh he doesn't know, I would say, what his brother would do. Right. But he's upping the chances of what his brother won't Won't do do. yeah so in in this instance there's no way to really tell and i don't think they need to bring it up specifically until Uh we see killua again but because killua is such a big character yes like there's no no way he's out of the story no way at all he'll probably disappear for a little bit but he'll probably make an awesome like return he'll make an awesome return but the question is directly after this is there going to be more kind of what it what it means to be a hunter stuff or will they basically be kind of given an open world kind of quest thing where it's like all right now go do things that you know would make you a better hunter and one of the first things they do is they're like Kilwa, we're gonna go find you yeah you are our friend yeah we don't yeah. care if you don't you know you're in despair right, right now we're going to go find you and we're going to make you yep. understand yep. exactly like how we feel sure because i think gone has enough magnetism around him now mm-hmm. to make him one of those main characters that brings a, a group around him right especially since since they are all friends even though it's mainly gone and Kalua being friends leorio and karapika still consider Kalua their friend I killa think. killa killa um their friend so it makes sense for them to go with Gon. It, it makes sense for them to go with Gon, but also it's more than that. Each of them have individual reasons. Karapika, I think he actually sees that Gon is someone that has is not. I don't want to say just special because that's too, too catch all right. term. But there's something different about Gon yes. that he's not fully sure about yet. Mm-hmm. I think Leorio feels like he owes Gon a lot. And also believes sure. a lot in Gon as a person, so we'll okay. stick around with him as well. And also, he probably wants to form a group at some point in the future, so why not pick this group yeah. anyway? Sure. But going specifically after Killua, I mm-hmm. think, might end up being more of a Gon-specific thing. Right. Because Leorio seemed to have some issues with the fact that you know Killua did you know attack his own family but, but, he, but was also he gave the, one of the best lines of the yep, whole episode uh-huh. oh that was that was fantastic and amazing mm-hmm. and i absolutely loved it and i'm so glad that they are basically giving leorio a way to really contribute yes. to the group even if it's not like combat right right um, or comic especially if it's since it's not comic relief well. yes yes absolutely um now uh, we should have made that a slap bet we should, have, we should have, but you know, considering that it wasn't even really a tournament. Well, we couldn't have known that. We couldn't have known that. We couldn't have but, known that it would end the very next episode. Like, okay, okay, hold on. So, I've never, I've never seen a tournament of sorts that was go two this episodes way. long. Well, not only was it, I think I've seen some that are shorter than this. In oh, terms really? Of stuff really? There. Yeah, just in terms of actual runtime. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But the idea is that this whole thing was one fight i don't count any of the rest of those really fights they were a bunch of conversations and a recap part of it yeah but they did it in such a way to really exemplify the dramatic differences between each character Mm -hmm. so jacob was able to get the one prediction right because he read really well into that part where he's saying that killua was serious he wouldn't fight pokle because he doesn't find it to be an actual worthwhile fight Right, and he has a lot of confidence and a lot of maybe yeah. ego about himself, which so. which really so, yeah. is unfortunate because if he had, 
it wouldn't have happened. That whole thing. That, that would whole not have thing would not have happened. <gasps> what if Netero knew, and he intentionally set up the brackets like this so that to test. that encounter would happen as a way to test them? Okay. All right. Because here's the thing: they said in the fourth phase that they had people watching them, right? Which mm-hmm. means that the hunter people saw Gitteracker's other form. But they wouldn't necessarily have known who that was. All they have to do is, if this is a world with, you know, modern technology, which it seems like it shifts in between having modern technology and not, not, not yeah. so much. If it is, though, all they had to do was do a quick Google search. Sure, just take you a know? picture and be like, oh, right. who is, is this? That? Yeah. And if the Hunter Association or whatever is as big as it is and as notorious as it is... All they have to do is take that picture and go, uh, we have someone who's an imposter potentially. Uh, we need right. to know and make sure this person isn't dangerous. And go, oh, this person is very dangerous. This is of the right. Kilwa family or yeah, whatever yeah. Kilwa's last name is. This is of that family. Right. They're a family of assassins. And, yeah. uh, you Not don't that want... they would necessarily mind all that much. Right. But, but uh, yeah. then Netero goes, oh, I'm going to sure. you know, oh, organize boy. the brackets. It's logical to assume that Netero knew. Right. Yeah. I'm going to say my favorite phrase to some extent. (laughs) It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. Like. Correct. Yeah. But we're also making the accusation. So you don't say, Uh, I think this is happening beyond a, not beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. Yes. The the negative um, and the positive doesn't really fit. Now, now here's something that I find. So if you recall, Mm -hmm. when we first started watching this show. Yes. I pegged Kilwa as a Kudere. You were right again. And totally I, is. I they, think that's, they, that's they a perfect literally, representation of a Kudere. They literally episode. were, like, he was, his brother was typecasting him yep. and saying, no, you have to be a Kudere. Yep. And he's like, but I don't want to be a Kudere. He's like, but you have to be. You and have white hair. <laughs> you have white hair. You don't feel emotion, you know, and all that yep. stuff. And it was one of those things where then we got to see Kilwa feel emotion very deeply oh, and it was, was amazing because we didn't that's mm-hmm. not something we normally would see right <sighs> oh man it was like well the funny thing was is when i was talking about it kind of mm-hmm. in in uh like in the discussion of the episode and stuff i mentioned the idea that we would get ooh, this will delve into Killa's backstory and in a way it was with it being the brother but it wasn't because this is kind of him in a new form because right. as his brother knows Kilwa, he's just a killer. But Kilwa yeah. has changed so much just by being friends with Gon for yep. this amount of time during the Hunter exam yep. that I think this is something that the show is trying to put in as a theme is that it's not the power of friendship that's going to mm-hmm. like bring the villain into the good side or something like that. It's the power of friendship that keeps people... Yes. On the right track. Right. It, it makes them know who they truly are. Yes. Yeah. Friendship brings people closer together and closer to their identity. Yes. So, Kilwa is in an identity crisis stage. Right. He, he attacks his own family and runs away. Yeah. He bumps into Gon through the hunter's exam, and they just connect. Right. And imagine what's going through Kilwa's head. He's oh, like, yeah. I've and, never connected this well with anyone and, before. Oh my gosh. The fact that they made it so that Gon was absent for that time, mm-hmm. it's made it so much like worse but better right. at the same time. Because right. you're like, no, don't listen to him. If Gon was here, you know he'd be saying, just shut the hell up. <laughs> um, like... He'd be sh- Gon would be showing that gleam in his eye yeah, that yeah. Hanzo was saying he didn't have when he <laughs> broke his arm. Now, te- That's the thing. Gone equates uh, having someone hurt one of his friends as being like a thousand times more infuriating than, than someone anything breaking his arm or doing yeah. some kind of physical violence to him. Right. Which I think is a it's an indomitably like it's 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 a trait amongst shonen protagonists whoa, whoa. that is very common. But it's being done so well here. Well, I, I would I would it. say that's not you can't even necessarily relegate it to a trait for shonen protagonist. I would just say people in general. You if someone if someone oh, say if someone insults sure. you, you might be able to laugh it off. Maybe you can't, you know, whatever. Mm. But if someone say insults your your mom or your best right. friend, if if someone if someone insults your best friend, you'll be like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> like, there there is that. I I I didn't want to 
make that connection because with those, it's generally a one to one uh, reference. Uh, it, sure. This isn't a one for one thing. There no, was no, no direct mirroring because one was physical violence and the other one was more um, of an emotional. Yes, attacks yes, and stuff but like that. but I would say it still stuff. it still kind of holds true. And it is it is is it they're both they're they're both attacks. So yeah, yeah you're right. right. Um, it's like attack me all you want. Oh, you attack you my don't, friend. Yeah, you don't oh, touch my you friend. Oh, yeah. you die. You die. Yeah. <laughs> I give you now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, I really like that they made the whole episode basically a set of conversations too. Yeah. One of the things that's. Uh, I'm noticing to be more and more common with this show as it goes mm -hmm. on is that they don't need to have fights for it essentially to be a good episode. And this episode did have fights. Technically. they Yeah, technically. But, but they weren't fights in the sense that, you know, shonen fights. Right. And even then, the fights were won by not really conversations, but won by Hisoka just whispering something in their ear. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we and, need to talk about and that I, I love eventually. That, I love that they brought that up, even though it wasn't going to come to fruition in the tournament because right. um, it got ended early. Yeah. But everything else was going on as if the characters didn't know that it was going to end early, because they didn't. And a lot oh, yeah. of times when you're making stories, if something like that Ooh. is going to happen because they don't want to basically waste any time, mm -hmm. um, even though this actually cleverly gave them additional time because it made the fights shorter... Sure. Um, they still kept that in there. And I love yeah. that because that's, yeah. that's a little mystery that, that's, that's thrown true. in there for us. And the fact that he used the same technique for Bodoro and Karapika, but they had different effects. Yes. Is extremely interesting. Yep. yep. Like, we've seen weird things from Hisoka. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever his weird bog clone powers are. Right, and the, the, the bloodlust. The bloodlust thing. thing where he went all like, uh, yeah. you know? And then we have this, where he might have some kind of suggestion type ability, right. or it's actually some information that he has that's really important. Sure, but but we are not meant to know what it is right now. Yeah. Do you think that before Ooh. he did the same thing to Bodoro, did your mind go at all to the whole Phantom Troop theory we have? Um. Because mine did, but then once he did it to Boder, I was like, okay, this has to be something else. Now. Uh, it. I was suspecting that something like that would come up in like his fight with Karapika, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't. What I was actually uh, suspecting that basically, Hisoka was saying that like he was going to do something terrible to some future person or, or something like that. Oh, maybe um, he wants and, to actually and that, kill some of the Phantom troops. Right, right, or, or, or whatever. Right, because like, like okay, okay, I surrender, or... Well, well, well wait, no, then... No, no, he Hisoka, surrendered. Hisoka surrendered. Yeah, I still don't so, know. What so, did he say? No, well, so maybe he was just set, like telling Karapika, like, I'm going to break Leorio or something like that. And then, and then he surrenders so that it's like, yeah, now I'm moving on to the next one. And then um, he basically said maybe something mm. similar to... Uh, to Bodoro and Bodoro immediately surrenders before Hisoka can, you know, that way. What if possibly, what if he knew about the whole thing with Gitterocker and Killua ending in such a way that he just didn't care about how the fights went? Sure. That. Okay. Yeah. And maybe he's, uh, telling them, uh, Gitterocker is gonna kill someone, so don't worry. This whole thing's over anyway. And then gotcha. He surrenders. Sure. Or okay. Yeah, I could see that. Something and, like. And that. by uh, having him surrender first, right? That's basically his way of saying no. I surrendered earlier because, like, that's that's how you know I'm right. I'm legit. Or maybe um, then he goes up to Bodoro and he's all like, um, "If you don't let me uh, win." Uh, Bodoro is going to kill you, or Gitterocker is going to kill, you. kill you. Sure, at the final fight. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, that doesn't work either because then all Bodoro just has to do is beat Leorio, which sounds relatively easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because everything I come up with of what he would say, mm -hmm. I don't think they gave us really any hints other than the two people that he chose to right. talk to being so vastly different and yeah. having different results. Maybe there was know. something that we could extrapolate from that, they'll but probably, I, can't, I can't figure it out. Yeah, they'll probably reveal what it was, you know, in, in due time. Because um, you, you think automatically threat right. when it's something to where they lose, but then it's the fact that he 
forfeits with Karapika. Right. Maybe I, maybe I with know. Karapika, it's two different things. Maybe there is no correlation that it's the exact same thing, but he says to Karapika, uh, you're worthy of being a hunter. And then oh, he sure. uh, passes. And then he goes to um, Bodoro, and, Bodoro he's like, and he's like, you're, you're not worthy. I'm going to kill you. And he's like, uh, okay, I surrender. Sure. And okay. he would rather have, Bodoro would rather have the opportunity to, go to again win against Leorio. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. just have the whole thing be over and he dies here. Sure. Okay. I, I think that might be a possibility. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Um, but having Satots be the one to yeah, that was cool. Um, do the uh, kind of the narration essentially, right? Why wasn't it Netero? Because um, I think Netero might have been better. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Netero, Netero might be too busy. Like he's I, he's kind of the big uh, dog. Yes, so he, that's that's he, totally a possibility. Be, but but I, I also uh, really like that. Um, I really like that Satots was the one to do it because he was the. First, uh, one. first one yeah so first the fact examiner. that yeah so it was kind of like this thing that it felt kind of coming full circle right sure the first phase examiner comes back to say hey good job kid you did it yeah, yeah. and the words that uh sat thought said to gone were so good oh yeah they were Very so good. good there was a lot of archetypal like uh is it archetypal or archetypal 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 uh, things that were I actually so. going on yeah. there they're like straight out of the hero's journey mm -hmm. like oh yeah He's basically granting him the boon for having, you know, yep. achieved the yep. the first step in his journey, and now right. with what we know that you know, Hunter Hunter is a decent length show. This is Gon's starting line right. into what will make him to be a hero or hunter, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. And he now has essentially the badge of honor, stating yep. you know his identity yep. and his role and purpose in the world. Right. And he can kind of look back to that as kind of a. Ah, yes, look at where I've come, look at what I've done, and I'll right. now move forward with this. Sure. It's just, it's very good. It's very oh, good. yeah. That, it's not was... like a guy forging his sword kind of good. It's like, this has, this has like mythic meaning to it. Right. The fact that they didn't need to make it flashy in, or like mm -hmm. over the top in yep. order to make it impactful. Exactly. Um, I loved that. I loved that. Because some of my favorite moments in storytelling is when they have it is in the quieter moments and when they do things in a more subtle way and stuff like that because um, one it's one of those things of complimenting the audience where they're saying like we understand that you will understand how big of a deal this is yes. we don't need to you know like go all over the top for it um, right. but then it's also just the idea that I, I when I think of Gon like realizing I'm a hunter now kind of like how Hinata was thinking like I'm actually part of the volleyball oh, club. Team, you know, I yeah. have a team now. Right. Like it's, it, it would just want be one of those sobering things where you're just like, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. I'm actually like, I'm, I'm actually going after my dream and I'm getting closer. I'm making progress, which is, you know, which is referenced with the nightmare that yep, God yep. had of that, not mm -hmm. getting close enough to his. Oh father. yeah. Great. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. And his nightmare was that he wouldn't essentially pass and become a hunter. Right. I think that was probably something that was a legitimate and, fear of his. And it seemed almost like it was something where he was beginning to despair that he, that not only that he wouldn't be able to become a hunter, but that he would just never be able to find his dad. Well, I think that's a constant struggle. Sure. I agree. Yeah. But I would say that's something that he's probably dealing with all the time. Okay. And he just is able to suppress it so it doesn't affect him because right. he needs to be able to get stuff done. Yeah. But when nighttime your subconscious has free reign yep you can't control what's going on and he's there. already been shaken up by hisoka you know earlier mm -hmm. i mean he did have his awesome win against uh, <coughs> uh yeah. hanzo but speaking of the hanzo win the part where hanzo talks about gone as how Ooh, he won yeah him that over, was great and everyone has that little bit of gleam of hatred and mm -hmm. anger when you torture them which i wonder why yeah. you know but the fact that gone had none of that yep. was basically how gone won the battle right hanzo could have kept torturing him until yep. gone's mind broke and i i love that because it it's by doing that they're basically showing that gone is not at all focusing on the task at hand mm -hmm. he's focusing on the fact of i need to find my dad yes and that's the only thing that matters to him so the fact that he's getting beaten up like this it it almost like doesn't even right. register he has short-term memory loss in that yeah. regard because it's not it's not something that registers into a 
a relevant piece of data with regards to you right. know, finding uh, his father. Or even like anger of like, oh, this person's causing me pain, like in, in the super immediate. It's just sure. none of that. And Yeah, and that's something I, I feel like adds also as well to the fact that Gon's emotions are a little bit odd. And yes. this is this is just another another bit onto the mm -hmm. like another bit onto the whole thing. Because there were some things I noticed that were said in this episode which kind of have this like ooh tingly foreshadowing. Yes. Like yes. like I don't know which ones I want to bring up, if not all of them, mm -hmm. but there were at least a couple where I was like that seems a bit too specific. Sure. The one that I think is the most obvious to bring up is the one that uh, Illumi was using as a way to try and sever Kilwa and Gon away from each other, and that Kilwa will always be a killer, oh, and therefore yeah. at one point he'll want to kill Gon. Right, yes. And that's yes. kind of a thing that I expect, actually, of these two characters right. as kind of the, the brothers that they never had, you know? Right, and so, then eventually they'll get... They'll they'll they won't necessarily become enemies. They'll just have to they'll, really they'll get really pissed at each other at yes. one point or another. Yes. And it will be that <laughs> feeling of wanting to kill someone. Right. And the, but you won't actually do it because exactly. you love you love these people. And I yep. think when you when yep. you love someone that much, there are points where you're just like, Oh, you're so close to me that you could hurt me that much. Right. Therefore, <laughs> you know, you'll hate yeah. their guts. Yeah. But then you'll be brought back by the connection and I feel like them pointing out the connection here mm -hmm. doesn't feel contrived also because... Oh, not at all. They actually have gone through a lot together. Yeah, they have. Yeah, that's one of the advantages that you have with longer-running shows like this is mm -hmm. you can have quite a bit of development happen in the very beginning of the story because percentage-wise, it's... Very yeah, small. I mean, what what's the running total right now of Hunter Hunter episodes out right now? 150? 130? Yeah, I want to say it's like... Yeah, like 150. 40 or so we are 160. over at least a tenth. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We are a tenth of the way through this thing. But that's, that's I would say, a... That's, I would say, actually more than just, like, a prologue or even a, like, a minor uh, beginning. That's, I don't know. I mean, for, for most things, like, think about it for, uh, you know, a regular... Mm -hmm. a regular like 25 episode show uh sure yes uh, for know, a 25 episode show absolutely you know once well, you get like, once you get okay. pat, once you get into the third episode you're basically uh, into right. a regular story well, yeah and even if you had something where it's like uh prologue first act second act third act epilogue right um well you could take a show like lost which i'd say has around the same size as hunter hunter sure probably uh, around there the uh you know, ten percent of loss is well into the story. Yes, well into the story. That's and you true. have some pretty decent that character development, true. and it's kind of an ensemble live action cast, which gets right. all that bits there. But I, I, I'm just glad they brought it up, mm -hmm. and they didn't waste time by kind of showing specific moments because yes. we had already internalized yes, we, those mm -hmm. moments where they had yeah it's, shown it's, things of being friends and stuff. It's another one of those things of complimenting the audience. Yes, They're basically yes. saying, hey. You know that these that these people are friends. You you know you they knew that we would be calling Leorio's line of "You're already friends" before he even said it. Right. You know. So <laughs> Leorio so, was basically just the audience confirming yep. that we what we knew mm -hmm. through the author basically yes. speaking that he knew yes. what we knew. And that's <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that's an example of great dialogue. It's basically saying like leading the audience so that they will feel a certain way and want to be able to yes. shout certain things at the characters at the screen you know whatever yes. and then have one of the characters in the story say those very things that the audience is burning to say right and it's not ones that were like oh uh, just say it already it's right one of those it's like no this like, needs to be said this yes. better be said if this isn't said i am going, going to be pissed, pissed. yeah like <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, Netero seemed very calm about the whole idea of the yeah. killing and the whole uh -huh. following the rules and whatnot. Do you get the vibe that Netero is just, like, a chill guy? Yes. Or do you really get the vibe that, like, he's he's kind of in the thing of, like, ah, oh, these are children playing with their little games. Exactly. And... I think it's just like that. Okay, because like, I get like the think... feeling he's Yoda. Yeah, yeah, like Yoda or, like, mm -hmm. Iroh, where it's, like, Oh yes, you know the mm -hmm. struggles. Well, okay, not Iro. I know that's a, yeah. that's a very sensitive subject for you because Iro is like the pinnacle of oh. yeah, yeah. But but just that idea of like 
people will do their thing, and that's fine. Yeah, they'll have their squabbles. But he's not really worried, because if it actually does get really out of hand, you know, <laughs> he can break up anything. Well, not only that, he's... He's, uh, he's kind of maybe strong enough to know that certain things are going to go certain ways. Right. And it's not like he's a Jedi who can see the future like Yoda, but he he's kind of, he's kind of been through <laughs> yeah. a lot of experiences. So he's like, Oh, look, the brash older brother. I've never seen that before. Oh, yeah. I've never seen this before. <laughs> right. Yeah. The idea that Netero is experienced and wise ooh, enough that ooh. he doesn't feel the need to intervene with all his great power. And, and I would say that Netero is old enough and wise enough to know that, um, it's best if he doesn't intervene with his great power because the kinds of struggles and conflicts sure. that people will have are things that they should go through on their own strength. If there's right. constantly the safety net thing, then yeah. people don't learn, people don't grow. Because that's it's specifically a, the hardships that's, that make That's them very do that. true, I would say. You almost see this in the extreme instances of a very over the top heroic hero and a very villainous villain where they constantly feel that need to mm -hmm. control the situation by meddling. There's right. the positive side of it where you it's get... It's the hero that wants to save everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you get the villain who basically wants their will imposed in every single scenario Azula. that they are even particularly, like, like tiny amounts of involved yeah. with. So, yeah, Azula or, right. you know, just other great villains out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like that because then Netero is kind of the Zen character balancing yes. in the middle. And the fact that he and has And we those, don't know how strong he is, but he gives off that vibe of, like... Right. Oh no, you know, I'm not strong at all. Then he yeah. serious mode and then suddenly he right. just you know, just straight up all Yoda. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. But um but but mm -hmm. I, I like that you said balance when he literally hey, No, I was thinking about that on on those little I was literally things. visualizing him like on like one of those like 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 kind of like spinning top things oh yes and yeah. he's on them with his shoes on the spinning top and he's just still while the top is spinning sure and it's kind of this picture of him just being like mm, yes yes <laughs> right it's kind of more of a joke thing master but... ugwe on his head on the stick as it's on the thing and then right he's like, like ugwe yeah, yeah exactly that mm -hmm. kind of stuff i i kind of actually have this this thing it's it's maybe actually a dream thing, but a little bit to Caleb's life here. I have this dream here of being on the top spinning, and every once in a while, when you find that perfect moment of peace and clarity and understanding, you stop spinning, but the top keeps spinning. So I see people that are, have great wisdom. They're the people that can stand on the chaos and spinning kind of system of life, but they are completely gotcha. facing the, the one direction. They're not going to be moved by this whoo, massive spinning force. Okay. And I just find it as being kind of cool. You can kind of look at it visually as if, like, you know, the globe and someone standing atop the globe on one of the poles and the globe spinning at a thousand miles an hour. And they're sure. just like, mm, I will not be. You know, they could make a little dance out of that. But anyways. <laughs> oh, but, but this really was a great episode. Best they, episode of Hunter Hunter yeah, thus far. Like, because yeah. they they took a fight mm -hmm. they didn't even have the fight right they made it personal uh-huh and they made it like oh mean the, oh so, so much. much like so much so oh. much and, because, and not only that not only that mm -hmm. this is potentially the episode before the launching pad for new story yes because i was worried actually once the hunter exam was over i'm like what do they well, do? Now what? Like, yeah. do they and, go and do, like, actual right. training? And, and that's where they learn, yeah. like, however to use the powers of right. a hunter or something? And if not that, then they, what? Do Ooh. we just go on a random side arc where right. they, you know, and just do stuff? Exactly. And the reason we don't like uh, random side arcs is because usually they don't they don't have a, a reason to happen. They're not very tied to the characters. No real much goals less the in plot. mind. Yeah. But with this, with this, not only is there a very personal reason for the next arc of the story, mm -hmm. you know, find Killa, mm -hmm. but but also the reason why this exists in the first place is something that could have been avoided if Killa was simply perfect. But he's not. Oh, that's such Even a good point. Even though they've been totally setting oh. him up to be able to do everything awesomely with a smile on his face like he's just playing. We're not worthy. <laughs> We're not worthy. That was such a good point to bring out, guys. Killua is actually the perfect killer. 
but he is not a perfect character. Right. And it's not something that's like, well, duh, no, he's not a perfect character. No, like he has he has he has issues. He has right. flaws. He has things that are actively holding him back from being the best version of himself he can be. Yes. And they're huge. Like right. they're big, looming mountains, mm-hmm. nasty yep. you know, necropolises on top of these mountains. Yep. Like now we are aware of them and we actually even got a face added to one of yes. them. And I'm I'm so glad oh. that it was a brother too, because that idea of like that older brother, like, okay, even if let's say Hey, what are you what are you saying? Man? Well no, no no but like let's say let's say even uh if Kilwa was good enough to actually defeat his brother. Right. right. Let's say right. let's say even if he was actually good enough to defeat his brother. Because there's a part of me that's like, well, I don't know. He, he might be good enough to take him, you know? Right. There's um, probably a decent amount of experience gap right. between it, the two of them. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like uh like Azula fighting like the Fire Lord. It's like it's like, okay, Azula would probably lose but, but you, know, you know, there is that possibility. Right. But it's this thing that no, he's this he's this imposing older brother that's I, and and I love how they slipped that in there that him along with the dad were teaching Kilwa everything he knew, and it's just like mm. and he's just saying all this stuff at him and Kilwa's just frozen, like he's he's so transfixed by his brother's words and everything yep. he's doing his countenance his and mm-hmm. everything that Kilwa sweating I think was one of the oh. best things that they could yeah. have brought up because. I'm trying to find some way to mirror Gon's little thing with the nightmare and Killua's fear of his brother mm-hmm. and all this, and I think there is a correlation. But what it was was the ambiance of Gon's mm-hmm. breathing that carries over past the title screen, yeah. yep. and Killua's just sweat and just kind of yes. frozen thing. There's these moments where the characters look essentially at this goal slash obstacle in front of them, mm-hmm. and they're terrified yep and it's not something that they fully understand because I'll, I'll tell you once you understand your fears you can overcome them like so quickly yeah so quickly i'm not saying that works for every single one but most of our fears are from things we don't understand and from things yeah. we don't understand right. exactly yeah. so by them having it get close to becoming tangible fears Mm-hmm. that gives us sense of the characters being able to go on a progression to understand those fears, yes. therefore being able to eventually right. overcome them. And another thing I want to give a shout out to, along the lines of what you were saying with the sweating and stuff, mm-hmm. um, as a writer, this is something that I've actually uh, struggled with a lot because uh, I've talked a lot about how you want to have uh, be aggressive with how you uh, show your characters, right? Because mm-hmm. it's easier yes. to tone something down than to scale it up. You want to make sure that the the idea and the image and whatever you're trying to convey is clear, crystal right. clear. No miscommunicating. No miscommunicating. Yeah. And because of that, um, especially for me, but one of the things I've I've shown I've I've seen in other stories too, mm-hmm. is that whenever someone is feeling some kind of emotion, they will get very expressive so that that is communicated. Like, like with, with motion and, and things that they say and stuff like that. And that's fantastic. You can really use that to amazing extents. But the things that just blow my freaking mind is when they do stuff like that without any of that. Without having a bunch of, like, gestures or body movements or whatever. Without them mm-hmm. saying anything. Just by, you know, the sweat dripping down, the breathing, you know, uh-huh. things like that. Because then it... It's something that it's engages subtlety. The, its subtlety, but it, and it complements the the audience, but it also engages the imagination. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I think that books have yes. on shows like this is that they it, it it directly engages the imagination, and a lot of times in a visual medium, it doesn't do that as much because you have so much more information. So by toning down the information like they did in this, while still seeding in those little bits of good stuff, and then just letting it like pause for a bit and letting you just think about it yeah. your mind comes up with all of this stuff of how kill right. must feel in this moment and it just makes it so much better right so uh, absolute props to them for doing that good stuff yeah wow yeah all right guys this was a this was an episode it wow, was. i think this is the longest hunter hunter discussion we've had thus far too. maybe yeah all right guys well, uh, if you want to see the next Hunter Hunter episodes, uh, go check out the link in the description below for yes. our Patreon. Get on early access and get on that Discord so we can chat with you more about right. stories or anime or what have you. Whatever. We'd love to get to know you guys. 
All right, guys, we'll see you later. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.